You're watching 52 Week Low, I'm Curtis Hollister. Cautiously optimistic, that's how most analysts are describing their opinion on the future of Waterloo-based research in motion, trading under the symbol RIMM. If anything, RIM's current story is full of positives and negatives. On the positive side, RIM is trading at an extremely low multiple, and 2011 revenues were up by 30% to almost $20 billion. On the negative, RIM can't out Apple Apple. In markets the two go head to head, for smartphones and tablets, Apple is winning. One analyst that is positive on RIM is joining us today. Uh, Robert Weinstein from Paid to Trade is currently supporting a buy position on the stock, and today he'll tell us why. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So Robert, anybody that's ever had a smartphone has probably owned a BlackBerry. They're wonderful. I mean, if you own them, you probably like them. And there's been this kind of momentum uh, for Apple around people wanting to try out iPhones, you know, um, and, and getting more competitive around going, hey, listen, I, I, I just want one. It seems like that's what the cool kids are, are using these days. What's this, what's this gonna mean for, for the future of research in motion? Well, RIM is going to have to stem the tide of iPhones as well as the Android operating system with the smartphones. Otherwise, they're going to face uh, increasing challenges in maintaining the critical mass. But while they are having these challenges in North America, Asia is doing fantastically well. So, I mean, they've, they've been in the news a lot lately. A lot of analysts are saying, okay, listen, I got to buy on this stock, you know, with this kind of a trade parameters. They're up about uh, 11 and a half percent um, uh, since the beginning of 2012. They're announced uh, just recently at CES uh, um, 2012 that the the playbook is going to be able to play Android apps. You know, news. Right. Isn't that just table stakes for the tablet industry? I don't think so. Uh, Rim has been clearly behind uh, the curve with the playbook, but. Uh, as they just announced and as I've watched at uh, CES show, the playbook is going to be able to play Android apps, uh, email, calendar, contacts are all going to be integrated as they probably should have months ago, but, the, but it's now in place and it will be able to uh, compete with uh, the iPad and with other uh, tablet platforms that are out there currently. Yeah, and I've spoken to a lot of people that have used the playbook, and they're actually quite positive on it. It just seems that it, once once momentum goes against a company and its technology, people just take a shortcut to thinking and go, oh, okay, well, I'll just accept what somebody else has said. Let's, let's, let's right. jump over to value. Um, you've got a price target. Uh, let's find out what your price target is. Um, what's your support for that or your rationale for that? And um, uh, talk, to, talk to your target. Sure. Uh, my current... Uh 2012 target is at least 24.50 per share. Uh, support is approximately 12.50. And what I found very coincidental about that is when RIM stock traded down to approximately 12.45, news broke out that had been literally sat on for months that RIM had been talking to other market participants uh, about a strategic merger. Uh, I've done the math. And even if they cart away a dead carcass, RIM is still going to be worth approximately twelve fifty a share. So being able to buy it at anywhere uh, south of $20 is, in my opinion, a tremendous value. So yeah, a lot of people are really being hard on this management team. You know, they probably do have some culture issues within the company, a lot of pressure on everybody, a couple of failed releases to, to effectively beat the iPhone with the next release. You know, they were called the iPhoney in some cases. One, one thing that I, I, keep, I keep on hearing is the value of their patent portfolio. Now you've had Nortel's patent portfolio go on the block for about $4 billion. Um, uh, but, you know, is there any real value in this? Some people are saying $7 or $8 uh, uh, a share is, is their value of their patents. But the fact is, if they're not monetizing these patents, are they really getting any value? Nokia just did a deal, Nokia and Microsoft just did a deal for their wireless patents uh, uh, to Moss Aid uh, to monetize those as an IP management company. So at least they're doing something with them. Is that the only way that uh, RIM is going to get the value for these patents? Like, what's, what's your opinion on that? What, what I think is important about the portfolio, or the patent portfolio, is if RIM needs to be sold, if it needs to merge with another company, 
then the value of the patents become incre incredibly important. Uh, previous to a scenario like that, the patents are important only for generation of new revenue and, and sales. So uh, I don't think that the patent portfolio is all that important as far as the valuation goes unless RIM is forced into a position of merging with another. Yeah, they seem like they're a long way away from that, in my opinion. This management team, these guys built this business from scratch. They're not just going to let it go for no reason. Right, I would agree. Um, at the same time, RIM did shoot up uh, about 5% last week based on news that they were talking to Goldman Sachs uh, in regards to looking at a strategic merger with somebody. So just uh, the, the rumors alone uh, is enough of a catalyst to force uh, the rim stock higher. Sure, of course, of course. Okay, and just talk a little bit more about international sales. So these guys are getting some good momentum in markets, you know, you said Asia and so forth. We had these riots in, in was it Indonesia, um, for the new, uh, um, you know, well-priced Blackberries that were coming out. Obviously there's demand. Are these markets that the iPhone is also available in? I believe so. And, and just recently, uh, BlackBerry was announced as being a, a, a payment form method, uh, a, a method of payment uh, for purchasing products in retail stores. So they continue to make good headway in the Asian markets. Yeah, agreed. You know, the fact of the matter is, I think a lot of people are uber negative on this because they're disappointed in the company right. because they've been they've been customers of this product and they, they want it to be better than the iPhone or the Apple products that are out there. I mean, I think it's just a matter of time. BlackBerry 10 is coming out at the end of the year. Um, I guess that's going to be the, uh, the true acid test. Right, exactly. And what I think is important to remember with RIM as a stock is it's not the same as RIM the company. Uh, clearly, RIM, the company, has tripped several times recently with delays uh, in the operating system of the playbook, delays in uh, the version 10 of the operating system of the Blackberries. So th they've had uh, several things that have tripped them up. But at the same time, the market has so oversold this news uh, with RIM that that is what's created the actual value. Yeah. Uh, the ability to make money with RIM is generated from the market incredibly uh, discounting uh, the, Their future. the potential and yeah. the ability, right? The future of RIM. Yeah, and, exactly. And and so is this an option? I mean, is this an option trade? What do you see as the trade here? Right, there's, there's several ways to play uh, RIM as a stock. You could either use options as a tool, which I prefer over buying the stock outright. And the reason for that is the option volatility is incredibly high, which means premiums are very, very rich. One way to do that would be to buy the stock and then write options against the stock. It's called a call write. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do that for various reasons, including uh, one, it, it lowers your volatility. Uh, when you write that option, you, you receive premium. And when the stock moves up and down, uh, the, the options do not move in direct correlation with uh, or in directly proportional to the price of the stock. And that can help uh, help mitigate uh, sleepless nights if, if the stock is on a roller coaster exactly. ride. So you don't, you don't quite need a, a seatbelt to, uh, to buy the <laughs> stock. Uh, the other way, uh, and is perhaps and is perhaps more conservative in some respects, is simply writing a put option. And what you do in that case is you collect a premium, and if RIM stock falls um, below the strike price, uh, that stock would be put onto you and you would buy it at the strike price. That is an opportunity to buy RIM at a lower price than the current market trading uh, price. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I think it's a lot of good considerations. I do think that down at the core of this, this company has a ton of potential. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your opinions with us, Robert. Thank you very much. For more research and opinions from Robert Weinstein, you can visit paidtotrade.com. And for more videos from public companies and industry experts, go to investorchannel.tv. You're watching 52 Week Low, and I'm Curtis Hollister.